Unit 4 is taking a look at the macroeconomy, and this is uh, the first set of concepts we need to study, but not all of them. So we're going to look at aggregate demand, aggregate supply, inflation, balance of payments, exchange rates, terms of trade, absolute and comparative advantage, and protectionism. And I'm going to try to guide you to the things you should be able to do or the, the ideas you should be comfortable with when you're getting ready for this exam by section. So let me get started with aggregate demand. You need to know why it's downward sloping, why it has the shape that it does, understand what the components are, distinguish between a shift and a movement along the curve, aggregate supply, same kind of thing, explain why it's upward sloping, distinguish however between short run aggregate supply and long run aggregate supply, depending on which model you study. I would actually suggest you to be familiar with both Keynesian and neoclassical models and distinguish between a shift and a movement along the short run aggregate supply curve. Explain the factors that would cause the LRAS to shift. When you combine them together, try drawing an economy in equilibrium, in short run equilibrium and long run equilibrium. Understand the impact that a change in aggregate demand or aggregate supply will have on the price level, unemployment, and output. This is probably the most important thing, is seeing what the resulting change is on these three factors when one of these two uh, curves shift or move. Like I said before, be familiar with these two models. Tackling inflation, what is the definition? The different degrees of inflation. Right, looking at deflation, disinflation, hyperinflation, etc. Calculating inflation, understanding that it's usually calculated by using a price index, so be sure that you know what the consumer price index is. Uh, identify what the process is for calculating inflation using a price index. And then use that information, also distinguish between nominal and real values. Obviously, nominal is uh, it's not accounting for inflation. Real it does. Distinguish between cost push and demand pull inflation. Understand what stagflation is and what causes it. What are the consequences of inflation? That you have uh, costs and consequences. So who benefits and who loses? What are the costs? Menu, shoe leather, and etc. Balance of payments. Understand the different accounts, current capital and financial. That should say accounts, not accounts. Uh, list the components that are within the current capital and financial accounts. Explain the uh, why the balance of payments needs to be in equilibrium and then what happens when it's in disequilibrium. And then think about what would cause disequilibrium within the accounts, right? What would cause a uh, disequilibrium in the current account or the capital account? So what are the consequences when that happens on the domestic and external economy? Then taking a look at exchange rates, define, explain nominal, real, and trade weighted exchange rates. How are they determined in floating systems, fixed systems, and managed floating exchange rate systems? What are the factors that cause the exchange rate to change? When it does, what is the impact on the economy, balance of payments, and aggregate demand? Specifically, what is the what does the Marshall Learner condition tell us? What does the J-curve evaluate, right? Being able to look at these two, uh, looking at this J-curve and seeing what is the impact really of a depreciation of the currency or devaluation. Understand what is the difference between appreciation and depreciation and understand that devaluation and revaluation are not the same as appreciation and depreciation. Uh, devaluation and revaluation are when, exist when the government actively takes steps in controlling the exchange rate. Appreciation and depreciation happen more so in the floating system. Terms of trade, be clear you understand what is meant by that phrase, what causes a change in it, and what's the impact of a change in terms of trade. Absolute and comparative advantage, how are the two different? Then you need to know a little bit more about free trade areas, customs unions, monetary unions, and full economic unions. Let me go back a second. Absolute and comparative advantage, calculate uh, absolute advantage is easy, but calculating comparative advantage can get a little bit tricky. And it's just looking at who has a lower opportunity cost. Make sure you can calculate that well. Stepping into trade creation and trade diversion, what, what's the difference between these two concepts? And to argue about the benefits of free trade, 
and looking at the trading possibility curve, which is essentially looking at how a production possibility curve shifts out if a country trades. Be comfortable with this idea of protectionism in the context of international trade, the different methods of protectionism, and try to give real life examples of each so it will help you remember and think through the logic of them. And think about the arguments in favor of protectionism. And also, it wouldn't hurt you to be aware of the arguments against protectionism. So all in all, that's what you're going to be taking a look at. I think you're comfortable with those ideas. You're in pretty good shape. So I'll see you in the next one.